Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Nice weather today. There's so many events happening this past week. I, we just heard some fragrance from all what it was happening in the United States, in the political world. There was a big change. There was a commotion. There was a people who were in stress, especially on a Tuesday when everybody went to, not everybody, many people went to election poll and uh, there are, I would divide these people in three categories. Those who are <coughs> directly involved in those candidates for presidency, those who support them, and that's number one. Number two, those who are just uh, sympathizers, those who went to vote, and ignorant, who didn't care much about whatever, whatever happened. Unfortunately, this thing happened even in our church. Some people are very much engaged in it. Some people so so. And the third category, whatever. It's just nice, nice day. Before we move in our study of today, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about the last Sabbath. What did we talk about the last Sabbath? What was the subject of our discussion? For those who. The worst part two. Say it again? The worst part two. Yeah, that was the, the, the general title. What was the, the main subject? We were discussing three types of words. Remember, there was the apples of gold. Three types of, of uh, words. The first one was the shallow words. Words, vain words. Words that can have double meaning. Like Walter gave us example today. You know, when he text, it could be taken two ways. And the next one where we discussed there was a death yeah. word. The, the yeah. words what you can kill with. It's not necessary with a bullet or with a stone. You can kill with the words. And the third one is a life, life words. Just, um, I'd like to ask you this question. Just think about yourself. Would you be rich or poor if you would be paid for every kind word, 10 cents, and would be taken away from you 5 cents for or every bad word? Unkind, let's put it this way. Would you be rich or poor? Very poor. Mm. Most, most probably. Poor. Most probably. Poor and broke. Poor broke. <laughs> you know. Even though it would be paid twice more for a good words, but looks like we are lacking. We don't have that enough. We should have more to encourage, to admonish, and move on. Our study for today is, it has a very interesting title that Jesus himself, he spoke in Luke chapter 8, 18. Take heed therefore how you hear. Are you a good listener? Are you a good listener? How many of you think that you are a good listener? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, that many, no? What is, what is, what is that, what does it mean to be a good listener? Give me a definition. How you can be a good listener or a bad listener? Any you pay, thoughts? You pay attention to the person. Pay attention. pay attention. You look at the person. You're not chatting or doing something else. <laughs> okay, I can hear you. I hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk. That, that's the good listener. And many times we are present physically. Our body is here, but our mind way somewhere. In sunny beach or somewhere else. Right, so I would say a good listener should be able to say what the person has spoken to them, communicate back what the person has spoken to them. That means you heard them. And our, correct. And our main study would be today how to be a good listener. I don't know how, how much of you need, but I believe we all need because Jesus made this emphasis many times from the Gen book of Genesis all the way to Revelation. Take heed, pay attention. Pay attention. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. O Israel, hear me, O Israel. God was appealing to their heart, to their mind. He was calling their attention. And uh, we have to understand one thing. If you feel some need, some problem in your character that you don't feel that comfortable, we have to, we cannot solve the problem by using the same kind of thinking we use when we create them. You have to change. That's all about to change. Um, that's why we are here. 
People argue and tend to avoid information and contradict what they already think or believe. And for the most part, people tended to stay with their own beliefs and attitudes because changing them might prevent them from living the life where they are living now. How are you willing to change me? I'm desperately praying for each of us here that we would not walk out of this door the way how we walk in. That we would carry with us that precious treasure, the Word of God, the only the Word of God that can change us. I would like to share with you, we have some uh, study guide that you can follow up and fill up the blank as we are moving along in our uh, studies here. Okay. How people listen to us. We as a parents, we have a big concern that children don't listen to us. But uh, Robert Fulgham, he said, don't worry that children never listen to you, worry that they are always watching you. This should be your concern, bigger than, than, than listening. Take heed, Mark says, take heed what you hear, Mark 4, 24. How we hear, what we hear depends on how we hear. In other words, our attention and honesty to the subject. Luke chapter 8, verse 18, again our um, scripture reading for today. Take heed therefore how you hear. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seems to have. Anybody can explain me this? Can anybody? How something can be taken away from you if you don't have it? Any thoughts? Are you with me, brother? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Good. How you can lose something if you don't have it? You miss out on what you need. You miss out on what you need because you didn't hear it. And it says here, Sister Vicky uh, pointed, from which he seems to have. Brethren, if you are not um, persistent and persuasive in a way where you're going, you would not get your destination, definitely. Whatever dreams you have, they would never be accomplished. They would never be accomplished. We all come here for one main reason, to hear what God wants to tell us today. And uh, on, your, on the back of your bulletin, the paragraph which says from Christ's object lessons, the Bible has been robbed of its power, and the results are seen in lowering of the tone of spiritual life. In the sermons from many pulpits of today, there is no that divine manifestation which awakens the conscience and brings life to the soul. The hearers cannot say, did not our heart burn with us while he talk with us by the way and while he opened to us the scripture Luke 24 32 when disciples were coming from Jerusalem to your mouth there are many who are crying out for a living God longing for the divine presence philosophical theories or literature uh, literary essay however brilliant cannot satisfy the heart the assertions and the inventions of men are of no value. Let the word of God speak to the people. Let those who have heard only traditions and human theories and maxims hear the voice of him whose word can renew the soul into everlasting life. Christ the object lesson, page 40, paragraph 1. 40? 40. 40. That's not on the back of our bulletin, is it? Or am I the only one that can't find it? I'm not finding it. Either. Okay, I couldn't find it. It's not on the back, brother. Okay, then just write it down in the statement. Yes. Okay. I will just write it down in the statement. You might want to read it again. You might want to read that again. I was looking for it, so I wouldn't miss nothing. <laughs> just write down the paragraph and you will get Okay. Um, my question was previously to you, how many of you think that you are good listeners? You know, people today try to make some cliche or some 
things that men uh, is not that good listeners as a woman. You know that kind of funny thing that when wife's talking to a man, he says, yes, ma'am, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And finally, when she pulls down the newspaper, he said, what was about that? No, he definitely didn't pay attention and makes her kind of upset, not kind of, really upset. And um, too often, that's in your book, we feel that we are listening what God is saying to us, but we really hear only what we want to hear. Is it about some of us here? We overheard we, the ear, the, the coming in one ear and coming out from another one because that's not what we want to hear. We want to hear what we want to hear. I know that many people, are um, when they get in trouble, they, when they have problems, they are going from one brother to another brother and until they found someone who will support that idea with a degree. And they say, yeah, here you are. I found the man, really good man. Not because he's a good man, because he just supports uh, his or her idea. So we're warning about how we hear in Luke 8, 18. You have that in your bulletin. God desires to speak to us. He desires to reveal His will to us and to be active, involved in leading us. In verse 16, the same chapter 8 of Luke, Jesus declares that He came to reveal the truth and not to hide it. The warning Christ gives us in verse 18 is in reference to hearing the truth and with what you do with, with it after having heard it. What do you do with it after that? It's good to have it, good to hear it. What do you do after that? Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 10 and 11, God with such a regret expressed his feelings through, book, through a prophet of Jeremiah. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, the ears is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of God of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in them. I'm talking, but they're not listening. They're not listening. They're not paying attention. God kind of rebuking and using this harsh word. He says, their ears are uncircumcised, not ready to, to receive. Not ready to receive. Not ready to receive. How do you listen and what do you what you do with it determine what you receive? It's a law of use. You use it or lose it. You better pay attention. You better listen. And um, someone says, how can you expect to keep your powers uh, of hearing when you never want to listen? <laughs> that God... Uh, should have time for you. You seem to take uh, as much for granted as that you cannot have time for him. How that could be? You have to. You have to take time and listen what God has to say. Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Not everybody can speak, no. But not too many people can be quiet. You know. Too much. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Do you remember yourself in your conversation with someone when you're interrupting a person, you're trying to kind of put your inputs, put your words in his mouth or her mouth, that because you know better, you know better. How, how much would be better just calm down, be patient and listen? It takes courage, it takes courage to listen, even though you know it's wrong. <laughs> You, you know that's nonsense, but just give a chance. Give a chance to a person to speak. Respect him or her, and you will have better ground to speak back later on. Pay attention. Listen. Don't make gesture. Don't make any sarcastic body language expression. Just listen. Again, you will have much more success when you pay attention. Proverbs 8, 32, 34 says, Blessed is the man that hears me. My dear brethren, how much we losing, how much blessings are we losing when we are not 
listening to God. Teach me thy word, Lord. That's all the, Paul, the psalmist expl explained. He said, search my heart. I want to know your will. The statement uh, from a great uh, from youth instructor. Yeah, it's in the last paragraph at your bulletin. Can I have one a reader from uh, young people? The last one on your on the back of your bulletin about young uh, people. Landis, Loudon here. A great responsibility tests upon the youth who have the privileges of school life. They are given many precious opportunities. The Word of God is open before them day after day. They have the privilege of listening to the message that God sends and of knowing what He requires of every human being. The youth who come to school determined to obtain instruction that will fit them for the higher grade will be ministering angels to attend them at every step. The still small voice will speak to them saying, this is the way walk ye in it. Amen. My dear youth, do not miss this opportunity to listen, to learn from God. Only then you would be able to hear the small still voice in the midst of big crowd, you still would be able to discern the, the, that, that small voice. If you don't have that foundation, definitely you would be tossing with the wind and nobody knows when you end up later on. How would the Bible, uh, what the Bible says about the listeners? That there is a process. The process to learn, um, we have to put some effort behind it. The listeners must, the, the, the hearer must to learn how to listen. Some of us, they, uh, some of us, we have this a ADD problem. You know what that? Is it? Does it? We cannot stay in one place for a long time. We have to move back and forth, back and forth. Attention deficit deficit disorder. The listeners, the 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 students. They have to have desire to listen. That was number two. Number three, the, the students have to have a desire to understand what he hears. And the uh, next one, the B, D. And if he does not understand, he should not be ashamed or afraid to, to admit that he does not understand. He should not be afraid to ask questions. The disciples were just the human beings as we are all, and they made some mistake as well. Sometimes they were a good disciple, sometimes not so. But we can learn from their mistakes. If you go to Luke chapter 9, verses 43 and 45, and read from what the Bible, what the Luke recorded there. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered, Everyone at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, Let this saying sing down into your ears. For the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. But they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them, that they perceived it not. And they feared to ask him of that saying. Wow. Have you read that before? They were afraid to ask. They were afraid to acknowledge this. I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Can you repeat it again? What was wrong with it? Are you sometimes have find yourself in the same situation when you're afraid to ask? They are afraid to ask Jesus to explain the meaning of that expression. They choose to be to stay in unknowing place then step over their pride or whatever was there. Bible also teaches us that we have to pay attention and listen very carefully. Very carefully. The Bible also is teaching us better listen, more listen than, than talk. James chapter 1, 19 and 20. Does anybody have this scripture there? James 1, 19 and 20. 
We need the reader. James 1, 1.19 and 20. Go ahead, Sister Edgar. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man work not the righteousness of God. Okay. We have two years mm -hmm. and one month. <laughs> Means that we have twice listen, twice as much to listen, and twice less to talk. Everybody except uh, Junior Wilbur, even him understand. He cannot express, but he understand, which is great things as well. Brethren, speak less and listen. Listen. Be patient and listen. Even though, as I said earlier, you don't like it, but just give a chance to a person to express, and you will have better idea how to present something if you disagree with that person. Bible also calls us not just to listen, but you have something on your bullet in James 1, 22. We can read from 21 and down. Therefore, get rid of all moral field and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. The word can save you, my dear brethren. Not money in your pocket, not the government program, not the education, not the safe car or anything. The world can save you. And verse 22, do not merely what? What is your, what, what, what you have to put in the blank? Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it, do what? It says, be doers of the word and not Do doers. what it says. <laughs> okay. That's the last one. Do what it says. It's a different version. Yeah. Well, it's the same meaning. Yes. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do, I'm reading the 23rd, <laughs> do not do what it says, is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. Mm -hmm. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Maybe not completely, but you don't remember all your wrinkles. Maybe yeah. ladies, ladies remember better than, than men, definitely, about that. But uh, whosoever, verse 25, whosoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. My dear brethren, you are here not just to listen. It's a first step. Second, do. Do. Do what it takes. And put everything on this altar. Time is running out. I've said it many times, I'll repeat again. We have, we have to run like there is no tomorrow. For our young people, for us as a grown up, don't waste your time. It's a good that you came here. But that's not all. You have to pay attention. That's why Jesus stressed out this situation all the way. In Revelation chapter 2 and 3, uh, when he addresses to seven churches, he, all the times, all the times, he finishes. Those who have ear, let them hear. And thanks God, we all can hear. Maybe we cannot understand, we cannot comprehend it. Ask questions. Ask question if you don't understand. Don't stay in that uh, in the place of ignorance. You have a chance to know it. The biblical formula is you have to listen what they uh, someone is telling you. Number two, to understand the meaning of that expression. And number three, apply to yourself uh, what you hear. Is it clear? Let me go with it. You have to listen what they what what they're telling you from here from the pulpit in your private conversation. You have to understand the meaning of that expression. And third, you have to apply it to yourself. Bible, Bible is also teaching us that um, without hearing the word of God, the way for to salvation is blocked for us. It's very simple. Romans 10:17. You have that, mm -hmm. don't you? So, that 
then faith comes by yeah. hearing, and the yeah. hearing by the word of God. It's so good that you are here, that you can hear it, that you can hear it. Hebrew 2.1, I, I love this Bible verse. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. Brethren, you cannot stay. If you stop moving ahead, it doesn't mean that you can stay there, take a pause, and move further down. No, you... Automatically, immediately, you are drifted away. You, you, you move, sliding back, sliding back. That, that's the, the law of physics. If you're climbing somewhere, you cannot stay. You, you, you go down immediately. Let's move on. And uh, I'd like to talk about the four types of hearers. Can anybody read um, Luke chapter 8, the, the parable what Jesus presented? From chapter, from verse five to eight. Luke chapter eight, verses five, six, seven, and eight. Four type of hearers. Sister Teresa. Luke chapter eight. Yes, verses five, six, seven, and eight. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and choked it. And other <clears throat> fell on good ground, and sprang up, and bare fruit, and hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Unfortunately, it is possible for us to hear with our physical ears and not hear with our ears of understanding, unfortunately. That's what happened. The number one, the, 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 there is the same seed, just different ground. And if you read further, in the same, in the same chapter, in the same chapter, Jesus gives the explanation. The seed is the word of God. Verse 11, the seed is the word of God, the meaning of this. The seed is the word of God, and the word of God is placing or falling in different type of soil, different type of soil in our heart. The way how we cultivating, the way how we accepting, that's what brings fruit or no fruit or for a while. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. That's not me, there was a says by Johann Wolfgang Goethe, German writer and artist in 18th century. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. That's all. I've read the story about uh, President uh, Franklin uh, Roosevelt, and uh, when he was a president, uh, he get tired of smiling and do this just the formal things. And one one of the reception, he said, "Okay, I'm gonna do something." And he was greeting everybody, and saying the same thing: "I killed my grandma this morning." <laughs> and people still, okay, so nice, so good of you. Keep doing your service as you're doing. All of them, all of them passed, except one foreign uh, diplomat. <laughs> he paid attention to his spies. Something is wrong with what he's saying. But he was repeating the same phrase, I just this morning killed my grandma. And say, yeah, hi, how are we? Oh, so nice, so nice. So nice. <laughs> they just didn't pay attention, my dear brother. Are you the one? How many times we use this formal expression? How, how are you? Remember we talked about that last time. You should really be concerned about that person before you say that. You should really be concerned. You should be uh, genuine, not the fake one just to say because that's the polite way to say it. I'm not saying that we shouldn't use any politeness. We should, but when you say how are you, means that you're concerned. You have to take a time, spend with that person to listen if you need to listen. Next one. Uh, it is in your, um, I believe, yes, in your... Uh, 
Study guide, Matthew 13, 13. How would you, would you fill that blank? Therefore speak I to them in parables. Why? Because they seeing, seeing see not, and hearing, hear not. Neither do they understand. They don't see, they don't hear, they don't understand. Wow, such a pity, such a pity, such a pity. One time the, 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 the scribes and all those elite came to Jesus and said, Why you call us slaves? We've never been slaves. Are you sure? We are children of Abraham. Okay. He said, if you would be a children of Abraham, you should do what Abraham did. Don't just claim that you are, but you are not. The, to have a name of a Christian, it, it's a great name. It's a Christ-like. And so many times we behave like Satan. I'm not, I'm not sorry much what you're saying now, but and many times when we're trying to cheat people, to sneak, to pretend that we are better than, that's what all what he did over there, in, in, way, way back uh, up in heaven, and that's what he's doing today. He's a liar, he's a liar, he's a father of liars. And he's just, he's just what? <clears throat> to kill and to destroy. That, that's it. That's it. And Peter also more, more says that he is a, as a like, like a roaring lion. He is trying to devour anyone, anyone. The Bible also that tells that he is attacking even to the very elect one. He is not ignorant about none of you. He, you, you are, I would say, under his focus. He is pay, pay, paying attention to everything what you do. There are those who make the mistakes to ima um, imagine that by simply hearing first one uh, sermon, they are already kind of like, okay, I've been at the church, I attend church, and they are reporting to others, or they sharing how oh, I've been. Even though if you listen to maybe a TV preacher or radio, I'm not saying it's bad, but don't take too much, don't feel so good about that. What do you do with the words what you what you what do you do with it? That's why if you just if you are hungry you move from, from table to table, there was not that that moving would not relieve your uh, your pain, your hunger. You're still gonna be hungry. You have to sit down and eat. That's all. That's all. That's why when you like butterfly would, would fly from flower to flower, that's not gonna help you. You have to Establish yourself, put the roots down, we'll talk about the roots a little bit uh, later. I believe this one you have in your, um, yeah. Does anybody can read us the first paragraph in our bulletin? Take heed. The first one. Mr. Victoria, would you? Can we just turn it this way to the camera? No, after that. Yeah, the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Take heed how you hear. Be careful how you oppose the precious truth of which you now have so little knowledge. Search the scriptures for yourself. You have altogether too limited knowledge of yourself. Know for yourself what is true. Do not take any man's words and any man's prejudices, any man's arguments, any man's theories. Take your Bibles, humble yourself, and weep and fast and pray before the Lord, as did Nathaniel, seeking to know the truth. Jesus' divine eye saw Nathaniel praying and answered his prayer. Thank you. What matters is not just to hear, but to have and hold the truth personally and inwardly. If you don't see to do this, you will die in your sins, even if uh, maybe a thousand voices directed to you, it's still not going to help you. The Spurgeon once in his sermons he made this expression it is a tragedy tragedy that bulk of her, uh, hearers are hearers only and are no more likely to go to heaven uh, than the pews they sit on its uh, on it in the churches across the land that's it no more than he compared with the pews i'm sorry Behavior is the mirror in which everyone shows their image. Your behavior is a mirror that everybody shows uh, your image. The way how you behave, that's who you are. The way how you listen, pay attention or not or ignore. Next one, B. Uh, superficial hearers. 
Let's talk about that. We still on this parable in Luke chapter 8 verse 13 when Jesus explains they on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy and these have no root which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. So much excitement. I've been through that many many times my dear brother. I'm the witness for many people to myself, but I'm, I'm talking about people who say, yeah, that's the church what I was looking for the whole my life. I want to be baptized in this church. So much excitement. When the challenge comes, they just <laughs> silent. Just like that, without much explanation. What does that mean? No root. Colossians 2, 6 and 7, the Paul says, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in it. Root it and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding the rain with thanksgiving we have to be rooted and built up in this truth my dear brother in jesus christ the the ones who represent his heart as the rocky soil believes and receives the word of God in respect to forgiveness and redemption, but fails to clearly hear what the word declares concerning the Lord calls to discipleship. We, we would like to be forgiven, we would like to be saved, but there is a cost, and we fail to count the cost when it comes to the routine, like everyday life for us as a Christian. Not just be impressed that God can forgive your sin now, today, and justify you. That's good news. But after that, there is a process of sanctification. In other words, daily life. The fa he fails to count the cost, to consider the extent of the commitment, self-denial, sacrifice, to which the Lord calls his disciples. He never appeals himself to gain a fuller or deeper knowledge of Christ, to discern his will. To become rooted and grounded in the word of God. Jesus Christ made this statement in Matthew 24, 12. We all know that. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax old. And I would uh, go over one verse, verse 14. The gospel would be preached for what? What was the main reason to preach the gospel? Witness. For witness, yes. Not for salvation. Not everybody would use this word for, for salvation. Many people would be just, uh, just for witness. Yeah. And this gospel of, this king, of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. My dear brethren, I definitely don't want this word would be preached just for me to be a witness that I've heard. Amen. I've been there at that meeting when it was preached. And the day of judgment will show up, will appear like in a big display, not a maybe your iPad or tab tablet, on a big display that everybody can see. You you can you would be able to see without glasses if you're wearing one. That what you do, the, the opportunity what you miss, the places where you cheat your fellow brethren when you was not honest with your tithes and offering, all of those things will be up. There. That's why we should pay attention now to all the small matters what is there. Satan can lead deceived souls to great lands. Volume 3, I uh, believe you have it. Can we have a reader for that one? The middle paragraph in the middle of your book. Yes, Stephanie. Satan can lead deceived souls to great lengths. He can pervert their judgment, their sight, and their hearing. It was so in the case of the Israelites in Numbers 16.41. But on the morrow all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. The people were disappointed, but the matter resolved it as it did in favor of Moses and Aaron. The appearance of Korah and his company, all impiously exercising the priest's office with their censers, 
struck the people with admiration. They did not see that these men were offering a daring affront to the divine majesty. When they were destroyed, the people were terrified. But after the short time, all came in their tumultuous manner to Moses and Aaron, and charged them with the blood of those who had perished by the hand of God. This was Satan does. This was Satan does. There was a great number of people who were sympathizers to Korah, Dathan, and Abihu, and God made His judgment upon them. The earth was split and swallowed them up. And after that, they were shocked for a while. After a while, they came to Moses and blamed Moses and Aaron. And then the day uh, they were the guilty party. They they were the one who, who made all the, the, those things. How about us today, my dear brother? When we have no right concept about the things, we blame people uh, yes. because they made the wrong judgment about myself, about someone else, because they had the wrong concept. Satan steal their ability to think. First, if they miss the first point, it's very hard to, to do the, the rest. I don't know how much, how many of you are good in math, but if, when you miss some numbers there in the beginning, you mess up the rest of the problem. You have to go back again and start, start, start over, uh, over, over again. That's why um, Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said, uh, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save, his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose it, his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. For what a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? My dear brother, we have not much to lose. We had a this before, I want to refresh your mind. If you want to know how much you worth, you have to add everything what you have. Your bank account, your car, your house, all your possession, all your asset together. And what death will take it away. And what is left, that's you. That's who you are. What Everything what you have and what death can take away. And what is left, that's who you are. Is it clear? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Because when you die, what is left? Yeah. Your character. Yeah. That's only, yeah. only your character. Yeah. And your record in heaven. Only your character. Nothing what you have, what you so dear, yeah. what's so dear yeah. to your soul, what you so treasure, what you fight, what you break the law to gain it, it's yeah. nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. Look at the New York and New Jersey just last week, how much they, they had. In split of the second, they lost everything. Everything. What it shows to me, you cannot place too much trust in earthly possession. Do we need a house? Absolutely, yes. Do we need a car? Absolutely, yes. Everything what we have in it. But there should be priorities in all of those things. When you put in the right priority, everything else falls in the right direction. And the third one, we start late. Don't look at the clock because we start late. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean I will stop at 12. <laughs> we need another 15 minutes. <laughs> and uh, the third one, uh, wait, verse 14. <clears throat> and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to redemption, to perfection, sir. It's very sad. The soil is good, the environment is good, but over the time a choke. Do you understand the word choke? Choke. Choke. When you put some too much food, didn't chew properly, it's very unpleasant. I don't know how many of you have been in that situation. I've been, I know what's that. And uh, you panic, you agonize, what's going on? you cannot breathe, you cannot just stack something here. And that's exactly what happens when you put too many things in one little place. 
Do you understand the meaning of it? Yeah. That's why Bible used this uh, explanation. It's chalked. You put in too much, too many things in one place and cannot go through at the same time. You get chalked. That's why we were talking about the priorities. Priorities. I know that there is a... Uh, the Bible says that the turns grow and, and cover it and didn't give a, but the same meaning. The same meaning. The person receives the word and honestly tries to live for Christ. He joins in church activities and profess Christ in his daily work. The problem is that he is unwilling to separate himself from the world. See the problem? He lives a double life trying to live for Christ while living for the world. We don't have time early writing. Early, I will. Early writing uh, two crowns. Read that statement. She yes. says that many are trying to hold two crowns and they would, not, not, they would get none of them. I'm just reading this expression. Perhaps just nice thoughts. Uh, the person receives um, the word and honestly tries to live for Christ. He, he joins in church activities and professes Christ in his daily walk. The problem is that he is unwilling to separate himself from the world. He lives a double life trying to live for Christ while living for the world. He brings forth fruit, but his fruit never matures. I want to talk about that a little bit. Immature Christian cannot bring the fruit of repentance. Immature Christian cannot evangelize the world. Immature Christian cannot love with unconditional love, my dear brother. At the same time, immature Christian, they know the stock market. They know the latest gadget on the market. They know the last car, which is the fastest one, the best one, the expensive one. They know everything, but not, not this one. That's immature Christian. That we pay attention, we spend so much time, we kind of proud when we talk about the stuff of this world with such a uh, confidence that we know, but when it comes to the spiritual side, we kind of <coughs> shaking. We are not, we, we are not sure. Oh, I have to call my pastor and ask you know what, what's going on there or something like that. That's not the right way, my dear brother. That's not the right way. That's exactly what we're talking here in Luke chapter eight, verse fourteen, that. That, that those tears grow and chop the good seed, the good blade. There was a good beginning. There is just a good intention. Good, good intention will not take us in heaven, my dear brother. Many people will die with a good intention. Christians who compromise can never evangelize the world. James 4.4, 4, very tough subject. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, knowing not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enmity, enemy with God. That's it. Whatever you want to put, you can smooth, you can make it more presentable, nice, but that's the Bible. Light cannot go together with the darkness. You cannot stay in a gray area, you cannot stay on the fence. You have to jump on one side or another side. I've heard this expression read recently. The, the grass looks greener on, side, on another side of the, uh, of the fence. And the, there was a continuation of that. Maybe they're just taking better care of it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's what you have to do. You know that great, uh, great preacher uh, in the 18th century, Moody. El Moody. He wrote, "Many professing Christian is stumbling block because his worship is divided on on Sunday or Sabbath. They they worship God on weekends. God has little or no place in his thoughts. If this world world is going to be reached, I'm convinced that it must be done by men and women of average talent." Moody. First John 2.15 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What is the world? Everything, everything what's surrounding us. 
everything will be paying attention more than the Word of God. The Word of God can transform. We know the John 1.1, 1, 1, no? In the beginning was the Word, Word was with God, Word was God. was God, and became flesh and dwelt among us. That's about that. The Word is really changing us. God created us such a way that we are, the chemical reaction goes through our mind. We don't need to punch any buttons, uh, buttons in our brain or our heart. Just what you hear can inspire you to jump, give you adrenaline, or can you put you down. The, just from hearing, such a powerful machine, the Word. The Word is everything. The communication, the way how you communicate, what you listen, what kind of music, what kind of friends you socialize with, all of these has a great impact on your spiritual life. And the last one, the sincere hearers. Fifteen. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, and what is in, in your uh, uh, study guide? Do you have it? Oh no, you don't have that one. Keep it and bring forth the fruit with patience. I, I like to talk about the Solomon. It's really, it's not a quite role model, but uh, it's a great lesson we can learn from him. Do you know when God appeared to him in Gibeon and God asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Since you're a son of David, I love David so much. For his sake, I'm willing to work with you now. And what did he ask? I heard something. Understanding what? To be able to serve God like his father. Wisdom to rule the people. Correct. First King 3.9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge the people that they, I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge these thy so great people? Understanding heart. My question is to you. Did you pray for understanding heart? What does that mean? Understanding heart. The things uh, which is passing by to, in front of your eyes, going through your ears, you have to have the spiritual discernment. Do you know that the that, uh, carnal people, they cannot discern the spiritual things. Spiritual thing must be understand with a spiritual mind. You cannot. For this world is a foolishness. For us, it is not. It's a way for salvation. He asks, we say for wisdom, but the genius of wisdom is the ability to open a room in one's heart for the, the talk and so forth for the presence of another. Second John chapter 10, 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear, hear and they know the difference. I never had a chance to be a shepherd, uh, you know, to have a sheep. But I, I grew up in some rural area and we had a, there was a, <coughs> maybe last house before the, you know, inside of the city. And uh, people were in our area, they had a flock, they had a sheep. And I have a friend of mine and I visited sometimes uh, him and talk to him it was about mm, 200 sheep and I asked him how do you know which is which he said oh this is because the way how people uh, make that business they had like 10 20 and they put together the hire a shepherd and they took care of their flock their sheep and later on on the winter time they took back of course they take care of cheese and milk of all those things. But the, the, what I'm, I'm trying to say here that he knew each of them to which to whom belonged each of them. I said, how do you know? Well, just simply look at the features. 
for me was identical. They, they were looked the same. Like I'm looking at the birds. They look as, look alike. How the mom can see the difference? That's why when you are listening to um, any any voices, you have to be really really careful because there are so many voices today. They can take uh, get our attention. John, third John. 8, 31, 32. Then Jesus said to those Jewish which believe in him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. In verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. John 8, 32. Not the gospel. John. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Those who are close to Christ, are those who hear and obey, according to Luke 21. That, that's the, the closest one. You remember that mom came and was advocating for her two sons. And Jesus said, mm -mm, it's not me. It's not about how much money you pay or how much um, relation you have. That's not about that. They hear and do the deepest relationship is not determined by blood, but by heart and mind blended together. The person close to God is the person who obey God and takes His word seriously. John 14, 21. He that hath my commandments and keep them, he is that love that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself in him. First <clears throat> John 2.24. I believe that, that's one definitely you have in your study. Yeah. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard. heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. That's it. That's it. He also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. That's the end of the Bible verse. I'd like to conclude with Revelation. Book of Revelation, chapter 3. Book of Revelation, chapter 3. Address. Jesus Christ address to Laodicea. I will start with verse 11. As many as I love you, I will rebuke and chast chasten. 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 Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If may any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and will and he with me. And he continue on, to him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcome, overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. Verse 22, he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. My dear brethren, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, I do know, as I said in the beginning, that we all have ability to hear, physical ability. My wish and my prayer, my greatest desire, that I would be able to hear it and share it with you. That you would be able to hear it and as well share it and change your life. Amen. May the Word of God change your life. Nobody else, nobody else, just the Word of God. Let Him in. Let Him dwell in you. Let Him be a king in your heart. And he will take care much better of your problem than you even can imagine.